Hi everyone, I'm Mark Stream from TX1 Networks. Hi, I'm Patrick from TX1 Networks. Today, we are honored to have the opportunity to share with you about our hunt for major leech IoT access rates, a deep dive into IoT threat terrain. In this talk, we will share in detail how we built an automatic large-scale threat hunting system and give a deep, deep into look into an overall threat situation, as well as trends we observed over the past year, along with six hunting examples to demonstrate those trends. We will share benefit from our research as well as response to threats we find. And finally, the next step for our hunting and hunting project. Who are TS1 Networks? TS1 is a joint venture company by Trend Micro and Mosa, and we focus on pro providing cyber defense and visibility for operational technology networks. Trend Micro has over 30 years security knowledge in, ICE, in, in search research, while Mosa has over 30 years of, of OT knowledge in ICS infrastructure and protocols. TX1 Networks was developed with this cybersecurity and OT knowledge. Currently, I'm a researcher for TX1, focusing on IoT, ICS data, enterprise analytics security, and search research. I have also shared the results of my security research and major cybersecurity conference, such as HitCon, Tour, Hacking and Bus Conference, ICS Cybersecurity Conference in USA and Asia. And I was and also the general coordinator of the Hack is in Taiwan Conference 2021, Hikang 2021. And later, my associate Patrick will be here to explain some key, uh, some key reason about our hunter hunting process works. His research uh, specialties are malicious payload, malware, and threats. And he was the developer of our automatic analyze process as well as the designer of our hunting engine and system. And today's outline is basically di dive into the three parts. First, we will discuss why we want to build an automatic threat hunting system and why, what the benefit for it. And second, why we, we will into the today's focus uh, and, and uh, uh, enemies, uh, an enemy of uh, our threat hunting system. It was not easy to build an automatic threat hunting system. And it is in this part, we will fully share the fundamentals of the English construction. In the third part, we will show how we use this system by sharing six examples of discovery from our third hunting. And finally, based on our observations, we will outline the next steps for our for the future of our IoT hunting systems. Introduction first. So why we why did we decide to create automatic third hunting systems? First, we noticed the steady increase of IoT threat and DDoS attacks, as well as the rampant IoT bonus and malware. Back, um, back when we started, Garland has just predicted that 25% of attacks in 2020 are related to IoT, and other results also predicted the size of the IoT market, and the world will be the 75 billion IoT devices by 2025. It's considerable um, that manual hunting is no longer possible on such a large, large, large scale. So look at the list. Developing automatic search hunting seems like a good next step. And what are the benefits of automatic search hunting? Automatic detection and real-time blocking of various various threats in, in, instead of um, locating various threat trends. And so analysis can quickly focus on the specific threats, and that's one, and the cost of human maintenance is extremely low. And we will show the concept related to this paper this later. And next, next, let's take about the uh, enemy of our third hunting system. And to clear, show how we create architecture of IoT and ICS search hunting system, we use a data flow to starting point. Our hunting engines are responsible for in interacting with the attack, recording the all traffic received, and then sending it on the, the hunting engine. Hunting engine mainly a great a great great gate. The traffic captured by multiple engines with malicious file and divided uh, divided the land into malware or suspicious file and PCAP after ensuring their integrity in unit of ours and log and are tra transformed to the hunting system cloud. And in step two, the cross the process and cross and compares the malware and PCAP before uploading land to the IWS S3. In the step three, we focus on 
preliminary analysis of PCAP and malware contact. And as is passed on the session cursor Ganon on URL and CNC server, and the malware cursor is created on hunting agent hourly. In step four, the process mainly produces a list, list of malicious IP and URL, which used to generate a block list to ensure a visual map of attacks. Actually, step four and step five run at the same time, and they are shown spread separately here for clarity. Simple to say, this step is responsible for unknown, unknown compassion of a malware. Step one to step four are all hourly automatic process. In other words, those processes are basically do not need human intervention to run. From step six, three analysts conduct a manual analysis of various traits and then produce corresponding trait intelligence. As for step seven, it is based on our implementation of hunting agent against the very various vulnerabilities. Some vulnerabilities require us to modify our hunting engine. At this time, we will create a new image and use one click deployment, and we will show this later. We have deployed more than 350 hunting engines globally. But how does one decide and deploy hunting engines to explain it for us, our sorry, hunting expert Patrick? Hi, I will describe hunting system architecture in this session. When hacker discovers our engine, the first thing we, they will do is try to send attack traffic to our hunting engine. Because we want to hunt various protocol-based attacks through hunting engines, we develop and implement multiple IoT and OT thread hunting engines. Traf traffic handler help us to assign specific, specific protocol payloads to correct hunting engines. After the interaction is complete, the hunting handler it will get the attack payload from multiple hunting engines. The hunting handler uses the malware hunting engine to collect malware or other mal malicious files from the attack payload. Finally, hunting handler uploads these payloads and the malware to hunt hunting agent for data transfer. Here is the simple source code for our hunting engines. As the source code shows, we added features to enhance hunting engines. As the left figure showed, we added interaction for different S7 commands to our hunting engines. This let hunting engines shows, shows the current response when it receives specific S7 command. As the right figure shows, we added a, fe a feature to, to record attack information when attacks interact with, with our hunting engines. This, have a, this helps our hunting system build re relationship table about malware and attack at, and attack easily. This figure, this figure is about the malware handler of our hunting engine. Through the malware handler, the hunting engine downloads malware and malicious files from a text, a text panel as a figure. The hunting handler will collect process from a text panel and download this malware and malicious files. Because malware hunting engines are responsible for, for collect, collecting these malicious files, these this malicious files can be tagged with attack information in real time. These tags also help us trace the malware back to the, its source. Here is the process of uploading the attack payload and the malware from the hunting engines to the hunting system. Here is the hunting handler. Before uploading the attack payload and the malware to the hunting system, the hunting handler will transfer these payloads through the hunting agent. We will build some tools for our hunting engine layer. There are firewall and a threat tool. To avoid the hunting system being broken by DDoS, by DDoS or DDoS attacks, the firewall is, is re responsible to guard and monitor the, the access history of hunting agent. The firewall demon keep external attacks away from the hunting system. To avoid larger payload to impact performance of hunting system, Split Tool is, is responsible to divide the original payload into multiple sections. And the low-balance and the low balance low, ba low balance of hunting system can collect the section which is belong to it. Next, I will return to Mars. 
it will extract the architecture on the AWS clearly. Thanks, Patrick. And when those files are uploaded to S3, Lambda will, tri will be triggered to perform the malware and session crosser procedures. Through so deploying the malware and session crosser to ECS, the hunting system can handle larger data from our hunting agent. And ECS allowed us to overcome the limited comm computational resources. The malware crosser detected the connection status of the CNC server and downloaded sample from the server. It will always analyze threads with the nearest material and information from the CNC server. So the system cursor is responsible for processing the content of PCAP. Well, it attempts to find a specific command injection, URLs, and anything else that may be considered very strange. After the hunting system analyzes the PCAP and malware, it procedure a list of a malicious IP and URL. At the same time, it will also trigger Lambda to conduct a more in-depth blacklist production process. We will compare it with a various threat to ensure that our blacklist is able to block real attack or bonnet members. The hunting system will create an internal service to confirm if each IP belongs to a shared IP or not. If the IP belongs to a public or shared IP, it means that the attack is high hidden behind this IP, and the hunting system will filter this IP and to avoid the IP being ins inserted into the block list. In the, in the end of this process, we will update the final block list to S3 to interface with the related production protection service. At the same time, we will visualize like those attack on our global three map. Our malware analyzer, analyzer will create everything related to malware. Basically, we compare the status of the malware with virus total. Virus total let us know how many totally new malwares we get from our hunting agent each hour, such as automa such an automatic process effectively reduce malware investigation and this is time spent by our internal researchers. Let's show our unknown malware received every day and we will, our answer researcher will do a lot of time to analyze it. And after analyze and the integration of relevant information, the complete information will be sent back to S3 for subsequent analysis. And you will see this page is used to Asina to query it. And three analysis will more deeply automate the content based on Asina. Let they want to hunt and analyze the queue, they will find the facility, the high list of analysis. For example, every day we monitor international information security incident and the status of vulnerabilities notification and release. We will conduct a deep analysis, a deeper analysis of those threats and determine whether or not we need to, to update our hunting engine around the world to ensure that we are cap capable to detecting those threats. And the last step of the whole process, this is a function set up to strengthen our automatic process. In response to constantly up, update um, threats, we often need to deploy the new hunting engine image to our third hunting systems. In order to make it clear, we have prepared one click deployed video demo for display. This video starts from one click deployment and runs step one to step five automatically. And here is our video demo. So this is our architecture overview again. And step one, we will deploy our new hunting engine with a new image. Here, no image here, no instance here. And we use our, to check our um, uh, video here. So here, we will check our um, configuration JSON file and make sure uh, we need to deploy 10 new hunting engines. And we try to deploy this for Red Hat. So we create 10 instance. And this low instance will deploy to the global instance now. So here, we just review this again, and we find a running, running instance well to the 10 devices. So there are 10 devices that are still running instance. And it's our new image. 
and then the data will flow to um collect data and from from to the hunting agent. So in our hunting agent, we'll collect the those p cap those file image log and any all, every information will um trans to the transmit to the um our hunting agent and to analyze to render this it. So in this process, they usually they will run the one hours or one point five hours because they need to collect and uh, feasibility to uh, our global all global our global um hunting engines. And then just let like, to check our um and then upload to the S three and this S three bucket will trigger lambda and trigger to our um EMR container and do the malware and session crosser. And in the session crosser. And for the session crosser, he will upload and try to um download a PCAP and try to um cross a session and to build a new um session join um, join session log and to run our um analyze process. So um I'm sorry for that. We need to mask some information because it is for us it's a very sensitive data, so we cannot disclose it. But we, we still want to um disclose some our um hunting process with you with guys. So, so we we choose to use smart mask low every information of here. So you are on see the um so, so many logs here. And you run the session crosser, and after the session crosser do this, and he will store the data to the S three bucket again. So we will have the uh, the, the data analyze data and and to um store to our S M bucket, and when that time will trigger our um lambda again. When the log data located here to upgrade here to our hunt logs, we will trigger our um lambda to run the um our um the uh, um IOC generator IOC process. So here is well will trigger our um devices here. So, so logs and it is here. We will make sure our um output output location. And we'll trigger some um, instance to run the ECS and EMR to run it in deep process. In this process, they, um, in this process, we'll, we'll generate IC, IOC list or block list again. But in this block list, they will um, compare more signature, more so internal, internal so intelligence again, and try to figure out and uh, make sure those. Um, Block list IP block IP is real attack or bonnet member. So we, we do a lot of things to compare and to make sure this IP this information this IOC is real. And then we will install to the our uh, export data and check our this hour and we will find oh our um pocket already deployed it. and we can create this quickly uh, which signature and which IP address or what for block. Which IP for block list, and we can also to the um for our analyzer and and uh, sorry analysis to to do this and like a black hat uh, image it's a new image and we modify the hunt hunt hunting engine in, uh, location to the black hat but in real in normal hunting engine they will um they will run this it's, it's normal hunting region like um maybe from Canada, from China, from everywhere. So we just want to trigger this. And still fire and more malware analyze. When malware locate upload to S3 and make a successful frag, they will trigger a sun bucket and to run the container. And in this process they will run our scanner to compare with virus total to make sure everything is is which one is unknown or known malware and which malware we need to um and over to our three researchers to analyze it. And also we can use um as a signal to query it to compare to the vice turtle, which one is no one or who, how many vendors which or no one malware in this Asina table. It's very quickly. Also, we will use the if those uh, malware is unknown, we will run our internal process to send our analyzer and to do the more um malware research. So this is our um three is our um Hunting process to, to show is and just to recap our highlight of our IoT access hunting systems. And first one, our hunting engine can hunt more than 30 protocols across, across IoT and ICS. And for dynamic adjustment, the system can automatically dynamic adjustment the analysis process based on hourly traffic size. And we do not need to dedicate a lot of powerful machine to do data processing. This 
is this cut, cut down cost. And in deep analysis allowed us to provide extremely, extremely um, practical in deep information about cyber threats. And one click deployment, which you just said, you just saw it. And, and our, um, we, ha we, we have classified a large number of payloads through our classification me mechanism. And the payload of the same type of attack are actively aggregate together to help us to uh, to help us identify known and unknown attack situation in a short time. Due to the time constraint, we will not explain more about payload classification at this time. Also, um, cost re re reduction. Cost reduce and allow us to continue to improve the research we want to do. And after introduce our hunting system, let's quickly see six hunting examples to see what this intelligence can do. First, IOC hunting as a service. From September 2019 to the first week of October 2020, we analyzed 220 plus TB of traffic. In fact, if we count all the way back to the beginning of 2019, our analysis will exceed 45 TB of data, which is also due to the pressure modulation of our architecture and attack situation. However, we measure this from September. For those um, 20 TB traffic, we have detected over 1.2 billion attacks from over 200 countries. And we hunt over 70 million distinct malicious IG and 15 distinct suspicious domains. Then, after in different analysis of hunting systems, we successfully blocked 30, 37 plus million malicious IPs and 2.1 plus million malicious domain, find 1.4 plus million pass possible bonnet devices, and find 2.6 plus million pieces of malware. Also, um, on average, about 3 million attacks are detected per day. More than 170,000 malicious IP are detected per, per day. And we block more than 93,000 malicious IP every day. It's a very big number. Second, global bonnet analysis and alert. This is trends of, of bonnet measured by date. Um, our definition is that when attacks want to separate or infect externally, we define it as part of bonnet. It can see here that those panel are all trying to download suspicious script or malware from other source in various forms. Trying to carry out various proliferation or control behavior using real case. We provide consumer story alert to public. For example, when we detect some attacks from Taiwan's government service network, we perform analysis and provide feedback to consumers who had reached out an emergency re response. And here are some basic um, count li like top 10 countries with the most devices on barnets top 10 attack source country and top 10 attacked countries, just for reference. And third, the unknown malware playground. Here we see the num total number of unknown piece of malware hunt per day. On average, we hunt more than 1,200 piece of malware in a day. However, gen um, from January to April 2020, the number of unknown malware was much smaller regards that this may be related to global COVID-19 situation. However, but um, if we look at the uh, unknown malware ratio predict, we will find that the difference is not that big, which is in line with the overall trend we see. And you will find that the number of unknown malware in the front is very scary. scary. But after removing um, duplicates, and uh, leaving only EIF files, um, this will be about 18,000 um, unique unknown malware. Frequently speaking, this number is still very large. But um, in terms of architecture, I3A6 on a mix still account for the book. 
of course, um, we will conduct simple um, automatic analysis on the unknown malware we find or manual analysis. Sometimes you will find a lot of interesting things. And for the, let's take a look one day or unknown vulnerability hunting with so many vulnerabilities. How do we know um, the status of one day vulnerabilities? So we create a signature for various vulnerabilities and observe whether there is any change in the trend. For example, here's a chart showing an increasing trend of web remote file execution, etc. password. So, so we will monitor this, or um, like this group keep, which was quite well known late last year. Blue keep show a very high trend at the end of the last year, and it show decreased at the beginning of this year. However, for unknown attack or vulnerabilities, we regularly classify various parallels and automatically send out the mail. So that the three analysts can quickly determine whether they are new attack or not. So we will just need to fill the lost parallel. We can find, we can check at least it's unknown or some which one vulnerability so will be find it. But, um, attack trends analysis as early warning systems. Um, the same is true for different protocols such as uh, SQL, Telnet, or HTTP. Uh, for example, in Calnet, we will find some information here. Here, like this, if very high, we will monitor what happening about the Telnet protocol. Or HTTP, such as a trend graph, help us quickly classify. When we find that the amount of uh, attacks on a particular protocol increasing, um, we will quickly coverage and conduct in keep investigations. And regarding um, Regarding the next generation of threats, we have also observed an increasing trend of detection or attack traffic against ICS or SCADA protocols. So, and our de de detection method has including hunting based on the con content of the protocols. For example, the Warshock screen on the right is part of our hunt, it's in our PCAP. So you will find our um, signature we are recognized is more the bus protocol, also well to recognize it. And finally, what are the next steps for the next generation IoT threat hunting systems? So mostly I'm focusing on IoT and ICS threat. And recording observation about overall trends, we expect to bring the complete industry 4.0 environment into our hunting systems. Of course. So development will never stop for the short term. We plan to input, import real ICS and SCADA environment to our hunting engine and use related um, technology to enable our hunting engines around the world to interface with real attacks. And in the long term, the real devices is sometimes difficult to maintain. So we expect to use uh, visualized uh, high interaction hunting engines in the future. So next, we will share a demo of our high interaction and engine sample we built. And this we will take um, S7, same as S7 as a sample. And the first one was Compact, but it does not meet our needs. Compact can respond the, um, to the scan from a map, but cannot um, conduct deep um, interactions. So you will, if you read or write, it will fail. But the example we provide here is highly interactive hunting engine that meets some of our needs. So you can you can use a map and you can use a uh, read or write command with as same as S7. So this will be help us to um hunt something by attackers. So you can use a map scan anymore and uh, uh, more many times and you will recognize it's a, it's a real um you will like it's like um real um, same as S7 PLC. Also, um, the next generation of our hunting engine will be um, coextensive with the, um, our IoT hunting engine, fully covering the scope of IoT. But for more in-depth analysis, for in-depth study, we will um, do many research on machine learning for traffic analysis and, uh, and malware analysis. So we, we believe this can make 
our search hunting more precise. And now closing remarks. Um, we believe three terms. Um, first one is um, automatic threat hunting system is very is an excellent tool to help us to hunt uh, the con continuously expansion or of IoT and IoT threats. And here six example of trends for our hunt are only a small part of the results av av available in the hunting systems. So this is still more treasures waiting for us to discover. And the next generation of threat IoT threat is coming. So an early preparation is the way to deal with it. We believe it will be the great update. And this is the end of our, our presentation. And thanks for listening. If you have any question, you can uh, message me or you can um, tweet me with me. Also, you can find the white paper in our official website. So this is a joint venture research, is joint research by TX13 Research, TX1 Signature Research, and Trend Micro Incorporate. And thank you for listening again.